All right. Good morning, everyone. Again, this is Ron. Saturday morning and uh, feels great in, in upstate South Carolina. It's uh, a coolness in the air and uh, has the temperatures dropped a little bit this week, but it feels great out. I hope you're comfortable where you are. Um, we, we go ahead and get started, see if we have any questions. Uh, I, I, I called myself listening to last Saturday and Sunday since I was not really able to join you uh, for most of the most of the session Saturday anyway. Uh, and, and you talked about a lot of things. We we talked about uh, the question about Insoft and, and, and how that relates to where we are now as far as uh, knowing that there is no Jesus. And I think we're still trying to to feel that out in a little bit. And, and uh, I I. I uh, I love the questions and discussions on it because it says that people are steady, steady thinking about it. Uh, we talked about uh, the, the, one of the important things that I, I, I'd like to come back to on a later time uh, when we can talk about it more, the kinetic, kinetic priesthood, including women. I want to look at that closer, but that was brought up. We talked about the males of a cave alarm of how they revered the females so much because of the role that the females played in, in uh, helping to uh, sort of uh, uh, shape that society. Uh, and one of the other things Pastor said that that uh, was kind of said as a sidebar, I think, that again, that that I think is is in, in, uh, important enough to revisit at another time, and that's recognizing the strength in others, and and not seeing, looking at it. If you if you can not recognize uh, or or you see someone is stronger than you in some area, that being a weakness in you if you don't deal with it or you don't recognize it to the point where where you try to uh, diminish who they are. So that that one was that one kind of stuck out with me. I made note of that so we can maybe revisit it at another time. But let's uh we, we talked about the 14-year-old shooting. Uh that was discussed and I like it, it maybe at some point today revisit that if we uh, don't have other questions, but let's let's see. Let's see what other questions we have. We can uh, and, and see what direction we go in today. Questions or comments on the weekend stuff that you talked about last week or anything else that may have uh, gotten your attention. Um, I want to mention something about the 14 year old boy. Sir, hey, one more time, Pastor. 14 year old boy who did the shooting at yes. the school. Yeah. Yeah, I had a couple of questions about that. If nobody, else, I was going to give someone else an opportunity, if they would, if they had anything to say on it, or, or not their stat, but on anything. Okay. My question was this: it, it, it actually is. Uh, three questions I had. One, you talked about the father and the son. And uh, when we when we when we look at what we've studied in scripture and how we've studied scripture, we look at whether it's the word son and daughter comes from the same root. And it means to build something, to, to bring something up. So the question is, what are we building? What 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 are we 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 we're, we're building something in this country and uh it's it's so opposed to what we're we're so okay I, I'll let's start with that one before we go any further cuz I have a couple questions to go with. Uh, would you rather me read them all or 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 this the one that I tell us oh, I don't know what you think is best Okay go ahead Go ahead and deal with that one, Ben. To about the father and son? Or the, the other 14 kid? Well, I guess both of them are the same because um, as I listened and read, listened to and read about uh, the circumstances, um, the daddy was cruel to, the, to the, the young man's mom as well as him. 
You were just a mean man. And um, the results of that was what happened with his son. Now, I'm not denying that what the boy did uh, was reprehensible. I'm not denying that at all. However, um, when I watched his demeanor uh, in court and listened at how the father mistreated him or abused him and the mother, then I saw something that this kid was empty on the inside. I mean, there was nothing there. He was oblivious to what was happening to him in court. And and, and I think that he is um, indicative of um, the um, lack of empathy, the lack of feelings that is developed, that's being um, developed in this country. And it's not just video games, it's the attitude and remarks of people in this country. I, I see that when you say that this is just a way of life in uh, J.D. Vance, in reference to that shooting, you are saying to kids uh, who feel nothing on the inside, you're telling those kids that um, it's okay. Uh, when you look at Wittenhouse, uh, Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse, when you look at him and the two people he killed, he became a hero. You that that's encouraging those young minds uh, to move in that direction. So we what's happening is it appears as though we are creating a whole generation of kids who feel absolutely nothing, uh, who are who are not just uh, only empty on the inside, but they have um, no feelings about anything inclusive of themselves. And, and it does not take much uh, to set them off. So I do have, um, I do feel like um, it appears as though the innocence of that kid is gone. The 14 year old is gone, but it's not. Um, he can be helped because he still is in, um, a, a, at an age rather, where um, his, um, his um, frontal lobe is nowhere near developed. Um, his brain, his mindset is nowhere near developed. He's young enough uh, to, um, to, to get help. However, the question becomes, what, you, what are you going to do? Are you going to get him help and leave him in prison, which is not going to be, uh, the help won't be effective. Uh, so I think that is something to look at as well. And you may say, well, what does that have to do with spirituality? Well, spirituality uh, speaks to uh, the, the entire community and, and the development of that community. Uh, something I mentioned when I talked about um, the reverence that, that um, the African paid to the female in the village. And if you think about also the sun, um, uh, that the the um, sons in this country are not reared, especially our Caucasian sons, are not reared to have uh, those kind of affections for for their mama. It's daddy. It's daddy who molds them into white supremacists. It is daddy who uh, 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 trains them on impresses them with weapons to the point where they fall in love with the gun more so than they do. Uh, with people, uh, they they have more more social interaction uh, with a gun and with um, their uh, parent who are uh, who has the same affection for a gun than they do with their friends at school. So that's part of what I, I see in that whole encounter, and and I would uh, be most appreciative if if um you see something differently or more in depth than that that you would uh, add it, please, especially to those who uh, have dealt with children of that age in the past. Thank you. Good morning. I, I'd like to just add something before someone adds something more in depth related to the children. Um, when you have a, an energy like the Trump energy that has no feeling and empathy and shows no feeling and empathy, 
um, for others, i.e. what occurred this week with the, they're eating our ducks and dogs and chickens kind of thing with no, with no thought to the implications of what those words are doing um, to the community that they accuse of this with no, uh, no feeling of being connected to um, that the community, no feeling that I and my brother are the same. Uh, it, it's, 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 not, it's, it's not only with the children, but it's with um, that presumed leadership of, of that particular group of white supremacists that also perpetuates this, uh, this energy of lack of empathy, lack of feelings, uh, isolation, uh, supremacy uh, that contributes also uh, to the energy that's available for youth um, to pick up on if they have no uh, undergirding of nourishment and support from a feminine energy perspective. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, what about now that, that that has happened, and now it's like the last week, the last couple of days, it's threats from kids that's now threat, uh, calling the schools with threatening, you know, with guns and stuff, and even at BMW. Uh lady told me yesterday that a, a man came in with a gun in his book bag and was in the bathroom waving it around and was videoing it, putting it on uh Facebook, but they arrested him. So, what's the connection there? With uh, now, it's like a trend as it's going on. Even Gaffney High uh, was uh, they had a threat there, and they shut down all the locked down all the schools, uh, even the elementary schools. Um, uh, I think that it speaks to what's happening. Uh, those kinds of things um, increase in the way that they are forces us to take notice. It forces us to, to deal with them. Uh, if it were not for what had taken place with that 14 year old, uh, would we be talking about the affection that um, this country has for guns in, in, in the way that we are? Uh, um, um, the uh, schools um, uh, have been threatened, but um, it's only uh, because of the love of love of the family that adult uh, males have with guns. And the guy who was at BMW um, in, in the bathroom, he simply has bought into a system uh, that uses guns to kill him. And, and um, uh, a system uh, that has no, no, um, or what no desire to give up their guns or no desire uh, to um to to mitigate what's happening in the schools. And again, when you got JD Vance saying that's a way of life, uh we just need to um um ramp up uh, security at the schools. Um what he's saying is keep your guns because uh we these kids are going to go to school in prisons. Cause that's that's exactly what they, they will become prison guards. Um, I, I think that is going to continue to happen until it's dealt with, just like everything else. We uh, have a tendency in this country of not uh, dealing with anything, honestly, until it gets to a place where it endangers wealthy white people. Um, there was a Highway 5. Uh, going from Gaffney to Rock Hill was a one-lane road. And the people on that road have been petitioning the state to widen that road for years because of the curves that was in it and the number of people who were being killed and injured on it. The moment that one of um, the state legislature's friend's son got killed on that road, the next year uh, they passed a bill and they and they widened that road. Now it's a four-lane road. So it, it, it's, it's a shame, but um, some wealthy person's child got to die before they're paying attention to it or before they're making any efforts to do anything about it. They're just how things have been working in this country and still are. 
I, I, I find it insane um, that, um, that, that you call yourself a leader and, and you see nothing wrong uh, with um, a kid 14 years old being given uh, AR-15. I, I, I don't get that. The gun, some of the gun owners are, are sending money uh, for his defense. Uh, I, I, I just don't understand that type of mindset because uh, if, you, if you think about it, um, when, when uh, we grew up, you may have access to a shotgun because of hunting or rifle, How, uh, but it wasn't AR-15. And handguns were forbidden for kids to even touch. So we are generating um, an atmosphere where murder is accepted. Uh, uh, think about what what do we what do we glorify? What in America do we glorify? That's not rhetorical. Money and guns. Money and guns. So we are Christians, and we and we glorify money and guns. But look at J D Vance. Um, he's kind of the grown up version of that boy. Because he grew up well, based on his book anyway. He grew up in a really violent, violent home and atmosphere, and with guns around. Um, and he, there was hope for him with his wife, but now that he's running for vice president, he seems to have, um, done a 180 on everything he, his wife was teaching him. Because, <laughs> you know, in, in earlier, a few years ago, he was putting out things like, that was a that were tweeting things that were against Trump. Now he's wholeheartedly um, drunk the Kool Aid or whatever. Money move. Yeah, exactly. Money, Money. and guns. And and maybe power could be added to that. Well, and now power is added to it. Yeah. Under any circumstance. We think about this. We glorify men who go to other countries and kill all the men and don't even know why they kill them. So um, the military, we, we, we glorify men who go to other countries and kill men without knowing why they do it. We glorify people who bomb um, to ashes our uh, cities and kill the innocent in the process. What is it that we glorify that is beneficial? Or who uh, is it that we glorify who has beneficial to humanity? And that's not rhetorical either. Well, actually, you, you bring up something because that was that was one of my other other questions for you. What does innocence look like anymore? especially in America. I mean, it, it, it's saying something that all of this is happening to, to school children. If there's any innocence left in America at all, that you have to be in our children, at least. And I'm saying that as a common place that everybody should be able to see. But that is being chosen for a reason. And I don't understand or see the reason. But as you said a couple of minutes ago, I don't I don't understand the mindset. I think we're at a place where you if you don't think like that, you there is no reasoning behind it. There's nothing for you to see. And, and I agree with what, what Barb said. There's a total lack of feminine energy. Uh, you know, but but this is this is uh you know, if, if just looking at what what do we what do we call innocence anymore? Does it even exist? Or is that what's the last thing that is being attacked. I think the kid is still innocent. I do. That's why I believe he could be helped. Um, 
yes, he did a reprehensible thing. But I still, I, I believe that the, the uh, innocence is there because he is not able uh, to uh, comprehend uh, the depth of what, what he did. And as far as um, the um, feminine energy is concerned, uh, this is male energy that's dominating this society. This is male energy that's sending um, uh, money to a uh, written house to make him a hero. This is not feminine energy at all. Uh, matter of fact, uh, feminine energy has no place in this society. So, so uh, the the maleness has uh, pushed it to the side, and that is the reason we've seen a continuous um, growth of um, the lack of nurturing in this society. Because um, that uh, why males uh, do nurture are uh, there. If you don't have empathy, you don't nurture anything. You control it or you destroy it. And, and in, the, in regards to uh, uh, the, the JD Vance that um, Audrey br uh, brought up, he nurtures himself. He doesn't care what's beneficial or not beneficial to life or his kids. He, he looks at what's beneficial to him as an individual. And, and that is why he's able um, to move from someone who's critical of Trump to a place where uh, he embraces everything he said. Now, don't get me wrong. There's no doubt in my mind that the things that he's embracing now has always been there. They've always been there. Uh, it's just coming to the surface. It's no different than money. Money don't make you different. Money give you the... Uh, uh, give you the, the uh, wherewithal to be who you really are. And, and that's the same case with our J.D. Vance. And, and uh, I listen to him, and this is just something that I, I say to myself, I listen to him and talk and think about, my God, uh, my, my grandson graduated from Yale, if that's what Yale is producing. When you listen to J.D. Vance, he... He is not, you know, he might be a fork, but he's not a knife in the drawer for, at all. He, he does not articulate anything well. And, and I don't get that. And, I'm, and I, I, I'm convinced that when he wrote that book, he had um, a ghostwriter or some heavy editing was done because he does not talk the way that the, the language is in, in his book. I'm done. I guess. I, I I guess if you look back at the Kushite kingdom, and you talk about how they were conquered, and we talked about the Gatling gun, and 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 other, I, I guess that that the ability or, or to to not understand the mindset has always been there. Because these things happen and we say, what what is going on? What what how can this be? But they've always been this way. The violence has always been this way. And the African is is never seen a reason or any kind of logic behind it to put put it to. So maybe that's the error. Maybe we look for logic, maybe we look for it in the wrong way to find cause. Uh, as to why this is happening and just see it as what it is, just uh, and something that's evil that you deal with from that perspective and not try to... Because uh, the first thing I did when I heard about it without knowing any any of the facts was, okay, why was this kid being bullied? I'm, I'm trying to find a reason for it. There has to be a cause for it, but not necessarily. So... Well, we talk about how spirituality <clears throat> uh, is not logical, but it's real. Um, I, I, I do believe the only way you can possibly justify um, what we are talking about in terms of um, the lack of empathy 
and the way our children are affected by it, you have to you have to think that way. And if you don't think that way, it's difficult to do it. Now let's take a look at this thing from a spiritual perspective. Let's let's uh, forget about the European and the African and look at it spiritually. Let's forget about the 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 human bodies of, of the African and the European. What we're looking at is um, two uh, spiritual mindsets. Are we not? Yes. I mean, this did not. This mindset did not come into existence when America came into existence. This mindset did not come into existence uh, when Britain became a nation uh, or a country, rather. This mindset has been in the earth um, all the time. And the embracing of this mindset uh, by uh, the European was a choice. And, and, and when we, if we're going to think about it from the um, Kushite uh, point of view and the, um, uh, the uh, European point of view, then we, we, what we see is a, a, um, a mindset uh, that, that is diametrically opposed to each other, where, where there's righteousness, there's unrighteousness. Uh, where there's um, unrightness, there's rightness. You see, I'm coming from see the, the comparison there. Yes. So, so that's that's what I'm saying. This is this. These are energies, and the more I think about this, the the more I am prone to believe that the forces of energy that we are experiencing is that that is the material, the substance from which we are to create. When creation uh, took place, um, the energy forces that brought us into existence were not physical energy forces. They were energy forces without a physical body. Uh, these physical bodies were brought into existence in order to create time. So that time, so that we would have the time uh, to mature into uh, the, the um, deities that we were uh, destined to um, mature into. Uh, uh, we, we were left the pattern uh, by the uh, by the inhabitants of the kingdom of the Kushites. We were left a pattern by that. And, 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 and when you separate from the body and think about it in terms of energy, right now, what are we doing when we talk about putting things in the macro? What we are actually doing is, is uh, putting energy in the macro uh, that, that that will influence um, the mindsets of humanity globally. This is not just um, uh, an energy force or energy, a source of energy uh, that affects this this country. It is global. So when we when we talk about this, then we 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 um we must. Uh, process that the reality uh, of um, the energy of our minds is different than the energy of our soul. And the energy of our minds uh, keep us locked in into the physical environment that we live in. But the energy of our souls uh, shows us that energy that needs to be repurposed. And the idea of putting it in the macro is a creative process that brings um, brings all the things into existence in terms of uh, energy forces. Uh, and what I mean by bringing it into existence, that, that reprocess or repurposed energy that is expressed by what happened with um, this young boy, 14 years old, as well as a J.D. Vance or Trump, that those energy sources are being um, reoriented by virtue of our putting things in the macro, and that or the reorientation of it is seen uh, when we see the diminishing the whole that um, that the mindset of a Trump and his followers have on this nation. I mean, this country. That mindset is beginning to diminish, and the and that mindset diminished more last Tuesday with um, that African woman being in, that, in the presence of that 
um, European mindset, it, it was diminished even more. When I say diminished, I don't mean totally destroyed. I mean, there is a transformation taking place. And when you see a Dick Cheney um, embrace, uh, uh, endorsing, uh, when you see a Liz Cheney endorsing, uh, Gonzalez endorsing Kamala, you're not seeing Kamala Harris being endorsed. What you're seeing is uh, energy forces being submissive to the creative forces to bring righteousness and balance into the earth. Does that make sense to you guys? It does. Yeah. I can see that. Thank you. So, hey, so we, the more. Oh, my bad. Forgive me, Reverend Richard. Okay, let me finish this, this sentence. So we are more involved in, even though we say we don't want to shape things, we are more involved in the shaping of things than we realize. I think when we say we don't want to shape things, we're talking about we don't want to be the, the, the determining factor in how the, how the results look because we know we, we are contaminated too. So but but we on the other hand, we are influencing uh, the shaping of things. Go ahead, George. Unless there are questions about what I said. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Rev. Just, just one of the things I want to add, Rev, that our Greater New Faith and Foundation is how we interact with each other um, in daily life. When someone... The more you interact with the public, and this may be opinionated, I feel the less depression or anxiety an individual will have. So it's real important to me as an individual that I interact with people. Um, when I was over the road driving truck, I mean over the road, over the road, two months at a time, come home for 34 hours, started back all over again. It was real important to me that I had some interaction with Greater New Faith. Got to get there. If, if church started at 11 o'clock, I got to get there at 1030 because I need that kind of interaction. Um, it's not always good to be in the presence of people who just drive truck on the trucking field. There are other things out here uh, in life that I just need. So when we interact with people, and I, re I mean really interact with people, get to know them. And if there are any licensed family therapists on here who I may not be saying it the best, I just feel that the more I interact with the public, the less anxiety I have, the less depression that I have. So um, with that shooter, I don't know his backwash or I don't know the father's backwash. I can only go by what was said. How much interaction did he have with the public? I, I know I'm long-winded, Rev. One of the things as a parent, I wanted all my children to play sports. And by playing a collective sport with other people, buying into the concept of working together as a team. Um, if you got any success out here and it's, and it's done by working parts, that is a good experience to know that you're part of a team that want to see you succeed and you reciprocate in that. So when we look at these shootings, when we look at each other as individuals, I'm telling you, I got to have interaction with people. If not, I am a walking time bomb. And that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. And that's one of the things that um, is very important. Uh, our children do not know how to interact because of um, the um, social media platforms that, that are they engage with. And it's becoming more and more difficult for that interaction. 
what, why, why is that so important? Because without social interaction, interaction, there are no lines of affection developed. Um, there are no there are no commitments to friendships developed. The the um, the affection is to a platform and the number of likes that you get, as opposed to being to an individual. Uh, you don't see children playing anymore like they once do it, that once they once did in the neighborhoods. Um, you see them with their phones or, or in the house playing um, video games as opposed to interacting. So um, I, I see that as a way that machines or technology is taking over and controlling humanity. It doesn't have to be uh, um, robots or the machines of the matrix uh, control the humanity. I see it as the uh, mind of the of um, this generation being molded uh, by technology, and if their minds are, are molded by technology, then technology becomes the controlling factor in the entire society. Uh, AI is only a problem if the minds of the people are a problem. Um, can I make a comment? Um, when you were talking about the energies and you were talking about we we put things into the macro, we're in, influencing the global mindset. Um, I just want to throw out there that um, have y'all heard about this incident in, in Kenya where um, this Olympic runner was killed by her boyfriend. Yeah. Um, and a lot of female athletes in Kenya are being killed. This is the third one in the last two or three years, killed by their significant other. Um, basically, it's domestic abuse. Um, but I just put that out there as part of the, the global influence in terms of, of the energy. Um, because I think the European mindset has taken over a lot of Africa too. Um, and particularly in Kenya, there is a lot of domestic violence. Um, there is a lot of what, what they call femicide um, because so many women are killed by their, their partner. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there in terms of getting it into the macro so that our energies um, influence that situation too. Thanks. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. um, uh, we ordered, we bought a uh, replacement for the TV um, stand, and we gave the, the other one away. The, the uh, one that we were waiting for was supposed to be um, delivered on Monday, and that was date specific. My concerns were that uh, Phoebe and I both have appointments with the doctors on Monday and they would bring it and nobody was here. Well, um, at eight o'clock Thursday morning, it arrived. And I was shocked because again, it was date specific for Monday. And of course I was elated by being early. However, it was a serendipitous experience because the person who I delivered it was a Ghanaian. And he and I all got in a conversation about um, Ghana and um, the Congo. And he, he talked, he said that um, his granddaddy and Patrice Lumumba 
or first cousins. And he talked about, um, uh, they, he said they killed Patrice Lumumba. My response was, of course, the CIA killed him. And, and, and we talked about the way um, Kwame Nkrumah was forced out of Ghana uh, by the same method. Um, uh, uh, will, you, will you please talk about who that was that they killed? Can, can you bring everybody oh, and lighten them, please? Patrice Lumumba was the president of the Congo. And he was one of the most progressive Africans um, on the planet. And um, the guy who was uh, who led us in D.C., he and Patrice Lumumba were best friends. So that that is um, that and and um, Patrice Lumumba came to the U.S. for our support in building the country, and they refused him. So he went to Russia. And uh, just to uh, solicit the support, and as a result of that, to see you know the uh, you know how America is, they, he was killed. And in doing that discussion, uh, and Kwame Nkrumah, uh, what well, this is funny because Patrice Lumumba was best friend with Doug Moore, who was uh, the guy who led us, and Kwame Nkrumah um, went to Lincoln University with um, Rem Hawkins' sister. So that's the energy, circle of energy out, out of Africa that I have access to through people who are intermediaries. But anyway, um, to, to stick to the story, uh, he, he told us, he told me uh, that, uh, um, that he and um, other African men were going to vote for Donald Trump. And um, I asked him why. And he said, because uh, Hillary Clinton hate Africans. Bill Clinton hate African. Look what he did in Rwanda. And he said that um, Kamala Harris is a friend to Hillary Clinton, and she'll do the same thing in Africa that Bill Clinton and Hillary did. And I was surprised he didn't mention Obama with Libya. But anyway, he said uh, if we vote uh, for Donald Trump, if he wins, his words were these. He said, if Donald Trump wins, he doesn't give a damn about Africa. And he'll leave us alone. Uh, his, 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 he meant that um, that would give Africa opportunity to develop itself because Donald Trump didn't care about it. However, the Clintons and, uh, and um, Kamala Harris does care about it and they'll be back in Africa just like Bill Clinton was. So that within itself um, spoke volumes to me. Um, so what am I saying? I'm saying that the influence that Audrey was talking about, about um, uh, domestic violence uh, is also seen in the energy that um, is that guided males from in, in, of African descent to uh, people like Donald Trump. This is a mindset of male dominance that permeates Africa uh, no differently than it does here. Now, the, the um, influences of Europeans in Africa uh, have been there for hundreds of years and, and, and uh, generation after generation, uh, especially in the uh, cities, Males have um, uh, embraced uh, uh, the the uh, erroneous uh, theory that males are supposed to run everything, and this guy uh, was saying the same thing to me that he was saying the same thing that um, males are supposed to be in charge of everything, and we can keep Trump and people like him um, in office so that we. Um, me in Africa can can um, uh, do what it needs to do to take over. However, I did not get an opportunity to really talk to him, but you know I challenged that, and and um, because he's in a hurry to make other deliveries. But um, I said to him, it's not going to happen. Uh, it's not going to happen with Kamala Harris um, because we see differently now. And he asked me, and we had an early conversation about me teaching. 
And, um, and he asked me about um, what did I teach? And I talked to him about the committed mindset, Christian kingdom and relationship to spirituality and our ancestors. And he kind of just smiled at me, but he held to that about Donald Trump. How do I see that? I see that as him saying that it will keep Trump away from them, but he has no regard for what will happen to people of color in this country under Donald Trump, not realizing that if he is successful in dealing with us, uh, he's coming. Uh, and, but, and when he comes, uh, it's going to be just like the uh, attitudes of, of the Clintons and, it, and the rest of this uh, leadership in this country who went to Africa to take what they want and to form a dissension between the different groups of people in Africa. So all of this energy is the same. It's the bottom line. I'm done. Um, uh, hey, good morning. I want to add to that, if I could, in terms of the energy that we are uh, uh, becoming more and more aware of and are addressing by being aware, being of, it aware of it and directing and direct it. Galaxy A10. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> by being aware of it and uh, uh, directing our intention towards it. But I just want to give my understanding uh, or my beliefs concerning what this is. It is the, the global, uh, in terms of our collective awareness on this planet, uh, push towards either one or two options. That is the one that uh, is fasc fascistic, uh, very similar to fascism. And that is, I use that word very generally. There's much detail and nuance within that. Um, but that is the uh, one that is dominated by sort of insane males uh, who are disconnected from their uh, sense of empathy and uh, disconnected generally from spirit. And that is one option. And the other option is one that is where I think we, I believe we are returning to. And that is the, uh, the, the, uh, the incorrect word is dominated, but it is the option that is dominated by uh, sort of feminine principles in the spiritual sense um, in that it is a much more harmonious, empathetic uh, a return to a sort of community awareness that is about integrating and uh, finding harmony in that integration as opposed to uh, division and domination. And I believe that what we are seeing in the earth is something that has not occurred before, not in any of the uh, sort of esoteric or occult uh, histories of the planet, including things like Atlantis, etc. Because what we are seeing is on a global scale, as opposed to in perhaps smaller pockets that had great effect, but now we are seeing this push on a global scale um, to fix the problem of what is essentially the out of control, disconnected, uh, spiritually dead minds uh, mindset and whoever its adherents are. And I believe, you know, in this uh, era of history is just that the Europeans are the most uh, religious devotees to that mindset um, for particular uh, reasons in that uh, but anyway um, whoever it is the point is that that mindset attempts always to uh, divide and conquer divide and conquer divide and conquer down 
through, through every single social hierarchy all the way down to your own mind itself um, which is where we get to phones and social media being such a uh, sort of agent of disconnection from other people so you feel more isolated despite the fact that you have you know thousands of people on your phone um, all of these things are interconnected uh, to uh, capitalism as the, uh, and I use that term generally, again, there's much sort of detail and nuance within that, but it, all these things are connected to capitalism as the economic system of the uh, sort of negative fascistic mindset. They are connected to religion in particular, the sort of religious institution of Christianity as the official religion, quote unquote, of that negative mindset. Um, but all sort of religions are on that similar wavelength in a way. Uh, the idea that men are supposed to dominate in the sense of uh, control or use their power to abuse as they see fit, um, that idea that men are supposed to be in that position is the default sort of uh, relationship between the masculine and feminine principle that exists within the context of that negative mindset. And that negative mindset, again, is one of those two options that we are globally being asked to choose between. Um, and like I said, I believe we've actually already made our choice. Uh, we are moving towards the more harmonious uh, option. But what we are witnessing and seeing is, as we've stated many times before, the pushback to that. The unwillingness of that negative mindset to release its grip of control uh, on <laughs> literally everything. And the agents of that mindset are primarily, uh, in this era of history, Europeans, and the way in which they have sort of in a trickle-down effect <laughs> affected every other uh, competing mindset on the planet and sought to, through division, to divide and conquer and abuse, draw everything to itself in a sense that it wants to turn everything else into itself because it can't coexist with something that is trying to move back to a more harmonious state of existence and that mindset the energy behind it and the push to turn this into a, a planet of chaos officially and forever is sort of what I believe is underlying and behind all of these uh, individual chaotic events, like a, a child who has nothing going on in his head that only thinks of violence and has been abused, et cetera, uh, that has access to guns and can go do whatever he wants as a result of that, uh, to play out that abuse. Um, those little individual acts of violence are all sort of part of the overall uh, effect that that mindset has, but also is part of its uh, sort of lashing out or flailing as it uh, recognizes its imminent defeat or recognizes that it is being forced to change and give up the, the amount of control that it has had. And I know I've been talking for a while, but like when J.D. Vance says things like this is just a, a way of life. Sorry, uh, it's just going to keep happening. That's the price we pay for our freedom or whoever else. Somebody else said that. I forget. Might have been Bill O'Reilly. Multiple people. That is indicative of the what that mindset is. They have no desire to evolve or move the human experience forward ever. It is 
to remain in a state of relative chaos. You, he called me. I was I was listening. Please mute your phones fast. Three three six. Would you mute your phone, please? Check your phones. Thank you. I'm I'm sorry. I was trying to call. I had. That's okay. I got you. I was opening. I'm here to hear the folks. So. So there is, I was saying, there is no, for that mindset, that negative mindset, there is, there can be no uh, uh, sort of evolution of human experience towards something more harmonious, towards anything really. Um, there is only uh, this sort of state of relative chaos that they want to maintain forever. That's why, as I said, J.D. Vance is like, sorry, this is just a way of life. Or whoever it was that said, like, uh, sorry, every now and then, there's just going to be a bunch of people that die. That's what we got to do to maintain our freedom. That is insanity. But they cannot move out of that because that, to move out of that breaks something that is fundamental to that belief system or mindset, and that is related to sort of Christianity. And that is the idea that there is the ultimate good, God, G-O-D, <laughs> and the ultimate evil, the devil. And occasionally there will be people who do things that are influenced by the devil. And that's why we all have to keep going to church and keep, you know, uh, owning guns and just keep praying real hard. There's nothing we can do about that. Sorry, it's going to be that way until either you die or Jesus returns. That is the state that they wish to stay within. To move outside of that, means to give up or break that fundamental uh, sort of religious concept that it is we human beings who have the influence over our environment as well as ourselves as opposed to uh, essentially God, G-O-D, and the devil and us just sort of bouncing between those two. Um, that the idea that there will be sort of a constant level of violence, a constant level of suffering across the world in terms of poverty, et cetera, uh, a constant level of uh, uh, needing to, uh, men in positions of power needing to and being right to abuse people below them. The idea that all those things continue to exist is acceptable within that mindset, especially as it is influenced by, uh, in particular, Christianity, and just the undercurrent, uh, the real sort of spiritual source of what that religion is, which is that negative sort of uh, male-dominated, spiritually insane uh, way of existing. Anyway, um, I just wanted to say all that to say that all of these things that we see are connected. Uh, the, again, I use the term generally, but in coming out of a concept, uh, some of the concepts associated with socialism or the ideas associated with socialism as a, uh, a, a way to organize a society, um, there's a, a concept called um, atomization. Basically, it refers to the tendency of capitalism, which is, again, a representative of this negative mindset, to divide and conquer every single aspect of human existence, human experience, all the way down to what you do day by day, what you do minute by minute, uh, so that your mind is totally uh, <laughs> conquered by that system and can't move out of it and that is essentially <laughs> the uh, negative sort of aspect of what literally your phone is it is the thing that dominates every second of your awareness as a part of the overall campaign to atomize every single aspect of your existence um so it's like to divide every single part of your awareness and your relationship to other people so that you cannot organize against that force or that negative mindset. So all of these things are very much related, but in the recognition that that 
uh, negativity exists and uh, calling it out sort of as we uh, try to do and direct our intention towards it uh, by putting things in the macro, uh, et cetera, that is the spiritual resistance to that force. That is us sort of acting out the choice we have made, whether we are conscious of it or not, to bring this planet uh, collectively, individually, uh, to a place of harmony, regardless of how much resistance we face along the way. So all of those little, well, not little, but all of these kinds of events, uh, shootings in particular, are meant to be the pull back into sort of a mindset of division and fear and chaos. Um, and it is not that they, these events should not be addressed. They should, but fundamentally, the underlying spiritual attitude that we have towards them is what allows us to keep moving forward in the direction of, or keep moving forward towards uh, the manifestation of the harmony that we know we are due uh, and that we are destined for. Um, thank you. Thank you. So, so may I may I add may I add uh, uh, something to to what Nick says? Uh, is 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 the same thing, but it's 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 uh, it's um, it's a little it's a little different, but it it's the same thing. Ron said that sons and daughters mean building something, and asked the question, "What are we building?" So. This question was fundamentally necessary for our discussion today, for our conversation today. As 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 you have said, Pastor, as Nick has just said, to put in the macro the necessity of tearing down the structures that don't support the spiritual essence of who we are. Tearing down this negativity, tearing down these walls, uh, the tearing down masculine dominated uh um the idea of masculine dominated societies, all these walls that don't support the very essence of the spiritual essence of who we are. And children are the building blocks of, of, of that structure. And children are not only building something, but they are our thoughts. And it's what our thoughts, what thoughts we are building and, 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 and supplying and nourishing. As Nick just said, what are we, what are we, what are we, what are we putting our, our, our minds to is it the negativity or is it is it harmony? So the the necessity of the conversation today was to put in the macro the need to have the influence of both feminine energy and masculine energy together as part of the spiritual building block of the soul of of of, of humanity and the strength of that foundational building block. If you look at it materially. It supports the structure, the infrastructure, the strength of the building. So likewise, spiritual building blocks, our children, our thoughts, uh, consisting of embracing the necessity of both masculine and feminine energy and the role that each plays, those are sort of like emblematic of what's needed to support the structure of building a spiritual humanity, a, a larger spiritual humanity, as Nick just said it globally, uh, from that perspective, not just here, but globally, uh, uh, that, that it's building a spiritual humanity that's based on the harmony and the balance and the empathy and, and the justice and all those things that we, we've talked about from that, um, from that comedic um, um, foundation of, 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 of Maya. So, so our children are our thoughts, and the way we organize our thoughts and accept our thoughts, and what we receive as parts of our thoughts, the necessity of both feminine and masculine energy and the roles that each plays in the building of our spiritual um, 
humanity sets the stage, I believe, for what's going to happen in the physical as we move forward with this woman on the throne, this African woman on the throne, and the role that 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 energy is going to play in terms of the world. So what we're dealing with today is not just this moment, as Nick said. We're dealing with an epoch, an age, another age. I think you said that earlier, that what, what we're doing today is going to affect the next thousand years plus. And so the, I, I, cannot, I cannot stress the importance of, of the conversation today as it relates to building, enhancing, supporting that spiritual humanity that's being birthed out of what we're talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When Kamala says we're not going back, <laughs> she's correct. And the double-edged sword there, you know, in theory, is that whatever it is we choose, that is what it will be. Uh, but like I said, uh, I believe we've already made the choice to go in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. We're uh, basically just dealing with how difficult that transition period will be, how long it will take, how uh, uh, painful it will be. Anyway, thank you. Well, let's give some thought to that because I think we 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 can influence that as well. Do you guys agree? I, I honestly think we are influencing it already. Yes. yes. Yes, we are. So how long it takes, how painful it will be, uh, we, we're, we're on the journey. That is ours to determine, right? And, 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 and when I mean ours, I don't mean us individually or looking at it. We, I'm talking about the, the, the desire for truth. And, and love and harmony is what will determine that. I agree. Yeah. Good place to pause, y'all. What do you think? Any questions or comments? Ron. Yes, ma'am. Um, I want to uh, bring something to light. I was okay. reading an article the other day. This is Linda. I was reading an article the other day, and this uh, took place in Hendersonville, North Carolina. This 20, I think he was 21-year-old truck driver, went to Hendersonville to drop off a load, and he was found hanging from a tree, a little young black guy. Well, when his mother, when they informed her, she wanted to come and pick up his body. So first of all, the police told her, that um, she had to get the father's consent in order to get his body. Well, then she got the consent. She goes back, and then they tell her that um, due to COVID, they couldn't let her come and pick up his body. So when she questioned that, they went back and said, oh, you don't want to see your child the way he looks. You wouldn't want to see him. So this is a cover-up of the police. And everybody is saying that this has not been on TV. Nobody has heard this. They're kissing it hush, hush. But they're going back to lynching. They also told her that he went to Walmart and bought this rope and hung himself. When they question that, it's always something that they're coming up with. So now they're going back to lynching. And um, I just wanted to make everybody aware of what's going on. And this Henderson deal is just right up the road from us. Hendersonville, North Carolina. Did they say anything yeah. about did they say anything about um intervention from outside sources of whether the mama had contacted anyone outside? I don't think so. They didn't they didn't uh say that in the article. It was okay. just saying it's, that every everything that she's doing, she's coming up against the roadblock. If you can find that article, would you send it to me, please? Okay, I will. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 
Good morning, family. This is Evelyn. Linda, I saw that, and it's all over TikTok now. It's all over social media. As a matter of fact, I was on the porch, and I saw it now. So light has been brought to that issue. But, yeah, I had to call my son this morning because he lives about 10, 10 minutes from Hendersonville. So he said, yeah, everybody's down there as well, up there as well. So, yeah, there, it's, light has been shed on it. Thank you for bringing that up, though. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, if you got Netflix and you haven't seen it, you should watch a uh, oh, my movie recommendation, Rebel Ridge. Pretty good. It's about a black man taking on a corrupt police uh, station. It's pretty good. <laughs> if you need some uh, positive inspiration. Um, before we go, because it looks like Ron was going to get a pause, Pastor Wonder, if you wouldn't mind, um, or or Ron or whomever, wouldn't mind just uh, uh, putting into context everything that we talked about, about like children and thoughts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, masculine, feminine energy, uh, putting that into the context of what happened with um, – the debate and subsequently the energy that's around that, just in a nutshell. Okay. I see everybody's smiling, but I don't see anybody talking. Uh, what, what we've discussed today is is the um, is the um, idea of the, the energy of, of uh, white superiority being um, in, in being infiltrated into the uh, young white males in particular, and is manifesting itself um, by. Uh, the school shootings, which which are is a actually speaks to uh, the uh, immaturity uh, of the mind of a of a child who is being influenced by this um, masculine uh, energy that is extremely destructive and and does not value uh, life at all. And when we look at that in relationship to the um, mindset of, of um, Trump and uh, the MAGA movement, what we are seeing uh, is an undergirding of that, of that type of mindset by virtue of who uh, Trump is surrounding himself with. Um, Kwame Nkrumah said, if you want to know uh, the, the nature of a nation, look at his, uh, look at his, um, his women. If you want to know the mindset of a nation, look at his, his women. And when we look at the female Lomer who is um, hanging with Trump and how tightly he is uh, connected to her and with her traveling with him, uh, we are seeing the mindset of Caucasian women. We are also seeing the mindset of that changing as well. Uh, the debate exposed this mindset uh, more so than anything else. And the exposure of it is not so much of what J.D. Vance said uh, uh, is as it is the uh, total ignorance of what uh, Trump expressed and said, uh, meaning that the, the, there is no justification for um, the, the uh, mindset of um, racism and, and uh, white superiority. In the case of J.D. Vance, it also shows that you can have a quote-unquote um, uh, um, Ivy League education still be dumb. Uh, so what he's actually saying is, is that whether the European mindset is quote unquote educated or or pseudo educated, it is the same, and it is being um, uh, being being re the energy is being repurposed from both settings. And today, what we have done. Uh, it, it put the energy of humanity in, in a space 
uh, to dominate those types of mindsets. And, the, and when we look at how uh, Kamala Harris handled herself in regards to that, what we see is uh, a man uh, uh, who represents white superiority being not only dominated, but being crushed uh, by the African woman or the African femininity. And the, the beginning of it was when she uh, walked to him, looked him dead in the eye, and, and uh, shook his hand against his will and said, come to Harris. And, and what she was actually saying, um, it, the, when she introduced herself, she was introducing uh, the goddess uh, to the devil. And, and, um, and it, by doing so, uh, she was able uh, to show humanity what it looks like like to be a goddess as opposed to being the face of evil and destruction uh, globally. And more importantly, well, just as important, I should say, just as important, um, she was not only showing that in, in regards to how poor white people are treated, but how people of color in particular are treated worldwide. And, and uh, that source of that evilness is not Britain. It is America, and the reason it's America is because America is the dominant force in the world today, and it's submitted to the um, in two ways. It's submitted to the African uh, feminine energy by way of uh, Biden uh, bowing out of the race and endorsing her, which means that that mindset was submissive, and it also showed the submissiveness of that mindset of white superiority. Thank you. Barbara, I hope that covered it. Yes, sir. Beautifully, beautifully done. Thank you. Okay, Ron. Thank you. <laughs> no, that was great. Thank you. Anyone else? Make sure we don't miss any questions. Uh, I, I just want to say I, uh, I I appreciate Linda bringing that to light too. Uh, I had not heard that. I, I'll be honest with you. But during the course of the week, I, I am limited in what I, what much television I watch and what I see uh, that needed to come about as well. So, uh, thank you. Um, something else to to meditate on. So any, if no other thoughts or questions, let us uh, take a pause right here and reconvene tomorrow, okay? So I'll see you guys tomorrow at 11 a.m. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.